Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to continue the Elvish Sword build. Today's episode is going to be getting all the fittings done so that they're at least on the weapon. They may not be ground, but at least I want to get them on there. That's guard, spacer, handle, spacer, pommel, and pommel nut. Let's get at it. So here we are, everybody's favorite, hand sanding. This is a really long blade with, um, I tried to get this part to 120, but there's still some 36 grit marks, especially down on the front of the blade. So this is gonna take a while. So I finally got the blade sanded to 220 uh, on both sides. And guys, in case you were wondering, that's the sandpaper to sand one side of the blade. Next step, we're gonna take this to the mill, put a file guide on this, and we're going to mill these two edges so that they're perfectly parallel so we can start to uh, work on the guard. These areas sure took a lot of effort. Here I'm using a Dremel with a drum sander. After this, I actually turned the Dremel off and just scraped it back and forth just to get a nice smooth finish. This took a really long time. I finally have the blade sanded to 800. I got tape on it just to protect it. I'm sure I'm gonna have to go over it one more time. But, um, Right here at the Ricasso is the important part um, that I've got all sanded down to 800 because you don't want to have to cut the hole and then sand this again because then you'll have a gap here. So uh, this is going to be my guard material. Uh, you can see that it is um, a piece of uh, copper Damascus. Um, honestly, I don't remember what this is from. I'm pretty sure it's not this build, but maybe it is. I'm going to find out after I etch it. So that's going to be the guard, and if you saw my last video, the uh, Copper Damascus Pendant, I will um, put a link up there in case you haven't. I'm going to bevel the edges and then form a, a point at the front similar to that. I thought that looked really cool and showed off the copper. Under that is going to be a spacer made of pure copper. And this is the first time I'm going to be doing some engraving. So I'm going to be doing some fancy scroll work all the way around the spacer. So stay tuned Thursday. I'm going to give you guys an introduction to engraving. Bye, honey. I love you. I love you too, honey. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's start it out. We're going to grind the sides of this so that they're parallel and I can put it in the mill. And then we'll do the slot. I'm not going to know till I etch the guard as to what project it was actually from. Time to put some layout fluid on it so I can put some marks on it to make it easier on the mill. When I mill the slot and guards, I always drill first. Drilling is five times faster than milling, so it's much easier to drill and then just mill out what's left. So there's the guard after milling the slot. Let's tap it on so we get a nice tight fit. There it is, nice tight fit, no gaps. Time to work on the spacer. This is 3 8 inch copper that's one inch wide. Same process as milling the guard, except you don't need to be as precise here because it's going to be totally hidden. Also, use WD-40 on copper, not oil. It just works better. 
Of course, if you don't have a mill, you can always do this by hand with files. I milled the slot for the spacer and I've just marked it uh, here so I know exactly where it goes. I am going to do some lineup pins, but the problem is that the lineup pins need to go on an angle, which is going to be a bit tricky. But um, I'm definitely going to use those because here's the wood that I'm planning on using. Uh, I have Oleg sending me some specific wood for this, but I found this one in my, uh, my wood stash, also from him. And uh, just look at that color. I think that's going to go perfect with the copper. Uh, and it's pretty dark, which is what I wanted. And it's got a beautiful sheen to it. So I'm going to try this one. If this one doesn't work out, um, then I've got some more coming. This one does, like it's an end piece. It's, it's end cut. And it does have a couple of small cracks in it here. I'm not worried about it. Um, this is already stabilized and they don't go very deep. Um, so I'll just fill them with CA glue, but I'll try it out. If it doesn't work, I got more coming. The more I look at this wood and the more I cut into it, I love it. I really hope this one works out. I think it's going to look perfect. Because there's such a steep angle at the front of the handle, I figured I would take it to the mill and just mill a flat area, and that will let me drill it much easier. I guess I could have drilled it before I cut it, but I didn't. I asked my grandson what he thought of the wood, and this is what he said. There you have it, folks. Words of wisdom. So I got the hole drilled in the handle, uh, and it fits after a little bit of work um, with a brooch and just drilling that out. Heated up the tang a little bit just to get a nice fit. Um, but that, that works well. So on the other end, there's a taper, the reverse taper here, and then another spacer and then a pommel. So I'm just gonna use a compass here and get the exact same angle that we have here. Before I started knife making a few years ago, I hadn't touched a compass since I was in grade school. Funny how things come full circle. I'm anxious to grind into this handle material because all of the shavings are very yellow. So here we are, so far so good. Got the handle piece in there next. Uh, and I've also put the back spacer on. Next is the pommel. Uh, and that's gonna be like this. So I'm actually going to, uh, this is a one inch piece of uh, mild steel. And I'm gonna be cutting just kind of a corner off of this, then drilling the hole, and then I'll, you know, figure out the angle after the, after the hole is drilled. Time to grind the slot for the all thread. It's always better to put a slot instead of just trying to tack it on the end. It'll be much stronger this way. People ask me why I don't just grind and then tap the end. Most times I don't know exactly how long I want this to be. So I always do it after heat treat and of course it's a pain in the butt by then. So using all thread is easier. Well, folks, I didn't get exactly as far as I wanted to, but it's Saturday evening. This video comes out tomorrow. I still got a bunch of editing to do, so I got to call it a day. But we got a lot done. Um, the guards, both of the spacers, the handle. We put the uh, all thread onto the, um, onto the tang. And I even drilled the hole uh, for the pommel, okay? um, which is a 5 16th hole here because the pommel nut is gonna be 5 16 over this, and then there's a 7 16 hole, and that's where it's the top of the nut is gonna stop. So, and actually pinch it down onto the tang. So, and we gotta cut that same bevel there, but we'll do that next episode. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.